Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer for Tuesday, November the 17th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the, praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded and they were created, and he established them forever and ever. He gave a decree and it shall not pass away. Our New Testament reading tonight is our continuation of the Passion of Christ from Matthew chapter 27. Now Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You have said so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now the, the feast of the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. And he said, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole battalion before him. <clears throat> and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. Then twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head, and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit on him, and took the reed, and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe, and put his own clothes on him, and led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. The first devotion of Martin Luther today is based on John six forty two. They asked, Isn't this man Jesus, Joseph's son? Don't we know his father and mother? How can he say now, I came from heaven? Difficult to understand. This passage shows how the Israelites complained about what Jesus taught. They thought it was ridiculous, foolish, and offensive for him to claim that he came from heaven and could give eternal life. After all, they knew his father, Joseph, and his mother, Mary. They complained because they thought he was either telling them an outrageous lie or he was a complete fool. 
Why would he try to convince them that he had come down from heaven when his parents lived near Capernaum? John writes this as a warning to everyone. When it comes to God's word and how God deals with us, we shouldn't worry whether or not it makes sense. If you want to be a Christian and understand the teachings of the Christian faith, you shouldn't judge the Christian doctrines with your mind to find out whether or not they sound correct. Instead, you should immediately say, I'm not asking how it all makes sense. All I need to know is whether it is God's word or not. If God said it, then that decides it. Often I have warned you not to argue about lofty spiritual matters or try to figure them out. For as soon as you try to make sense of it and put it in terms you can understand, you slip and fall. Origen and the other church fathers had this experience. They made the mistake of reaching too high. They tried to combine reason and worldly righteousness with the doctrines of the Christian faith. These teachings transcend our reason. We join together in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As always on Tuesdays, our prayer focuses on the martyrs and those who are in prison for confessing the faith. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we praise your fathomless mercy with which you take pity on sinful men. All the prophets and apostles preach this to us in your holy word. Let our hope not be put to shame when we pray to you for all who suffer at this time. For behold, the evil foe has become mighty, and the great ones of this world often rule with unrighteousness. O God, who in former times caused your saints to overcome injustice, strengthen also today all who stand in need of your help. Grant that all prisoners of war, held as slaves and sacrifices of earthly wrath, may return to their home. Stand by all refugees and homeless people and be their justice. Be a father to the widows and orphans with your strong protection. Go through bars and fences to those who are imprisoned for the sake of your name. Strengthen them for a good witness, and let them not waver in the confession of your name. Teach us through their example and the example of so many holy martyrs to be ever watchful of the confession of your Son's name. Let us not be put to shame when the evil foe lays his hand on us, but if it is your will that we be persecuted for confessing Jesus as our Lord and only Savior, then support us in your grace that we may withstand all trials and grant us peaceful rest. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, as the healer of nations, you released many from their bondage to sin, death, and the devil. But when it came time to release you, the crowd chose a murderer instead. Through our co-crucifixion with you in the waters of our baptism, may we continually be released from our sins as we confess you to be our everlasting King, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our short reading with Luther tonight is from Matthew 10, 25. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? The gospel will never perish. The fact that nowadays we still encounter offense need not surprise us, since Christ himself meets with it. I can expect to fare no better than my Lord Christ. Since he experienced apostasy, I might know that among us, not everyone will stand either. In Matthew 10, 25, we read, If they have been called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? Therefore, let them proceed with their persecutions. This doctrine will not perish or crumble because of them. 
The gospel will and must be constructed on a different foundation from that of might or of great learned and smart men. Let the angry princes or the ranting and raving bishops persecute the gospel. Let the learned people abandon it. It is necessary for the gospel to be despised outwardly by the world, to be trodden underfoot and persecuted, yes, even for those who claim to be good Christians, often to fall away from it entirely. There is, after all, another power which preserves this doctrine. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good night.